On this video, we'll be chopping that guy. 1937 Nash, I don't know, some sort. It's a weird car. I don't think it's Canadian, but should be. This is a pretty solid car. It was actually at the Nationals in 1968. I guess it was like some sort of lowrider. That is a crushed velvet headliner. It's gonna, it's gonna pain me to pull it out, but it's part of it. So I guess I'll start disassembly. Got no screws in. Well, I got the headliner out. It'd have been nice to have saved it from a cool factor, but uh, no go. Plus now I probably need a tetanus shot because it was um, yucky. Well, I got the back window out and discovered that under the headliner, it's all wood. And of course, it's all rotten. Good times. I would have thought by 37, there'd be no more wood in cars, but... Uh, the entire window frame surround, which I'm gonna get rid of, but it's all wood, all the way up into the header here. The whole back window, which I don't think I need any of that stuff, so I might be all right, but a uh, little bit of a shock. Another neat thing is the drip rail is actually screwed on, so that's kind of cool. So one cool thing about this car is the windshield comes in from the inside. Uh, I've never seen that before. You got this little lip here and it slides in this way here. Um, that thing must have leaked like hell when it rained, but it makes it easy to get the glass out. All right, time to add all the bracing. Stupid ass dog. So the first thing you want to do before you put any bracing in is make sure the car is actually square. Yeah, you, know, you do this by looking at all your door gaps. And these are consistent all the way around because now is the time to correct anything that might be out of whack. This car had a subframe and a frame notch. So I don't think it's as square as it could be. Make sure the doors open and close nicely and there's nothing funky going on. These lines look good. Trunk lid seems relatively square. And this door looks like it's gonna work out as well. Last thing you want to do, I should probably adjust that door there. Maybe I'll check that. But the last thing you want to do is chop your car and end up with a crooked car. Because the last thing you want is a crooked car. Uh, it'll make a ton of work trying to fix that after the fact. So do it now. I got this cross brace here. Keep the body from doing this. Now I'll put the 
cross ones in. There, I got this in, got a cross in, down to the front. I'm pretty confident it's not gonna go nowhere now. Uh, that's real cool, screws on. Got the rain gutter removed, it just unscrewed, so that was super easy. Probably not gonna put it back on. I think I'll do something a little different. Uh, we're gonna convert this to a three window, so the quarter window is gonna be leaving. So I'll probably trim this out as tight as I can, and then we'll uh, shorten the roof somewhere around this area. Not quite sure yet. And then probably gonna cut the catwalk somewhere in the middle, move the whole back where Back window forward, lay it down, and then just the usual stuff. But uh, shopping a car is not that difficult. Um, the hardest part is laying it out and doing a lot of pre-thinking prior to cutting the thing, because the more you put in thought into before you cut it, the easier it is to go back together. I mean, really, a monkey can do it. It's just a piece of metal. You know, people have been working on metal for, I don't know, a thousand years, so this is nothing special. So don't be scared. It's just a car. Cut it up. If not, send it to me. I'll do it. So the customer wants a four inch chop. So I'm just going to make a little uh, template of a piece of aluminum and use that uh, to scribe. Another important thing to do is figure out where is the best place to cut everything. So I'm going to spend some time measuring to figure out what's the best placement for your four inch piece that's going to be missing. Uh, the more time you take to do this, the easier it will be to put back together. Hopefully you don't have to cut up here and spread anything or anything weird like that. So I definitely don't want to have to cut into the cowl. So here is the sweet spot. It is exactly the same. So that should help to go together nice and tight. This is why I like using the little metal shim because you can move it all around anywhere you want it to go to help mark everything stays consistent so i'm going to get rid of the window here i'm just going to use a simple scribe to pretty much mark out where i'm going to cut it i don't want to cut too low down here i want to retain as much of that meat as possible we possibly cut it somewhere in this area here. This will all have to move backwards, which means it'll have to get cut here. And this will all go forward. No big deal. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Very complex one. So now looking on the inside of the top of the door here, I see I have this brace here, so I'd like to stay away from that. Let's see if I can cut it somewhere in this area here, depending on where it lines up. Which that puts me about right here. So I'll cut it up there and then down that edge to meet up there. That way, everything, when this all comes forward, this piece will come back and fill into this side. That way, I'll have enough meat to weld and I'm only going to make one little patch here. Easy, man, easy. I'm trying to figure out where is the best spot to trim the catwalk. So if you're looking, how it swoops up. Now I'm gonna cut it and move the back window forward. So I need to have the line off the trunk and the line off the window to line up nice enough that I want to make one little small filler pan. So probably somewhere in the center of this crown 
is what I'm thinking. And the same thing with the roof. This will get cut somewhere in this area here and it will move forward up underneath this roof. And then I'll trim the roof back to match the window. And that should shorten the roof. I'm going to say probably, oh, maybe about six inches. It should be about good. You don't really know until you start moving things around, but we're just about there. I think tomorrow we're going to cut. I do like to make patterns from side to side, so that way, kind of apart, everything matches. It just makes it a little bit easier. That should be right there at the break, where it goes from being flat to where it starts to curve up. So we'll clean that up and match the other side and just about ready to go. I'm gonna cut it across here. Been playing with the straight edge for a while and finally found, I think, what is the sweet spot. Almost. I like to have that consistency from one to the other. Now to move on to the doors. So moving on to the doors, uh, they can be a little tricky, but like Bobby Walden says, the doors are the most important part of the car, so you gotta spend a lot of focus on them, because uh, it really is what you see from the side. But in terms of cutting them, beginning where to start, if I follow this line here, then that runs into this fatter portion of the door, and that's gonna be a problem. So having to move it up to find the sweet spot uh, is the key, so these actually measure out to be the same. Same with the center, we'll have to be cutting. This will have to be widened probably three inches. And probably gonna end up cutting right around this area here. But there's also, you gotta think about the inside of the door. So the door actually tapers from bottom to top. So you have to account for all those different things and all these different body lines. So it's a little more complex uh, than you think. The door might theoretically be harder than the rest of the chop. So a word of advice, don't automatically cut the section out of the door to match your other cuts. Just cut the door top free and trim it as needed. That way you can sneak up on it and you can correct, correct any gaps you don't like and these types of things. And try to cut it as square as possible. It'll make your life a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the doors first. Get those out of the way. And work on uh, securing the roof and getting it set up. I'm gonna use my cordless grinder here because it, uh, it's a little more precise. Um, plus it runs slower and, and it's quiet. I prefer quiet. Uh, you will notice the giant scar in my hand that is from the lack of having a guard uh yeah some lessons are hard to learn although that didn't hurt nearly as bad as the day i cut my thumb off so you know learning curve oh yeah don't do that that hurts Next, I'll cut the header out. Hmm, looks like there was some electrical in there.
getting there. Got the doors out, quarters out, both sides. Now I just need to work to suspend the roof from the ceiling so I can cut the A pillars off and the back window out. Typically I would use ratchet straps, but uh, I cut all the rafters out for my car lift so I could double stack. So now I got to come up with some sort of genius plan that I haven't quite worked out yet. So in my haste of trying to get set up so I could film this thing adequately, uh, I failed to put some thought into how to actually suspend the, uh, the roof here. Let me show you. So I've got a GoPro here. I got a GoPro here. I got lighting. I have an additional iPhone simply to film for social media in that format. I'm currently on an iPhone 14. And I put all this effort in just for you, by the way. But uh, after monkeying around here, I went ahead and got a rope, tied it up to my beam there, down there to my workbench, and over here up to the rafters, going through the car. And then I, of course, ran out of rope. So I found the uh, handy extension cord, which I'm sure is OSHA approved. I got that tied off to my English wheel and then over there to the base. Now I have no idea what's going to happen when I cut the roof, but I'm sure it's going to be fantastic to watch. So hold tight. Well, that wasn't bad. I planned that, I swear. So, progress is moving along here. Now under the A pillar and uh, we'll see what uh, craziness happens. Sometimes this filming thing is really hard. Stupid camera angles, can't figure things out. This is actually a lot more difficult than anyone would ever think. At least in order to try to put something out that isn't complete garbage. I mean, if you've stuck around this long, then maybe you need a better hobby. See, my extension cord work. Super genius in action. I know you had your doubts. Don't worry, I doubted myself too. I'm gonna go ahead and whack those pillars while I got a chance. Whoop, look at that. Oh, super genius.
Now that ain't going to work. Ack. Oh, I mean fudge. I don't want to offend the children's. I just can't help myself. You can see the A pillars are actually going to line up. Pretty darn good. Obviously, I got to do a lot of cleanup on there. Starting to look like something on the side here. Going to close that back window up and it's going to be fudge sickling awesome. Ain't no turning back now. This whole super genius thing is harder than it looks. So, next time we'll. Uh, Put it back together. Please subscribe and thank you for watching.